Hey everyone, I'm Debbie Gabara and I'm the Gathering Pastors Assistant here at the River Church. Thanks for checking out one of our messages today. We would love to get connected with you and your family. One easy way to do that is to text River Connect one word to 97000 or you can visit our website at theriverchurch.cc to learn more about us and our upcoming events. If you'd like to give to the River Church today, you can text the amount you want to give to 84321, or you can visit our website and click the Give tab at the top of the page. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the message today. So we're kind of at an interesting time in the world, and it, it's, it's that like culmination of sports are kind of coming to an end. Now, I'm not a baseball guy, so when I say sports are coming to an end, like for me, baseball always goes on. And I know you're probably thinking, like, it's Mother's Day. Why did you jump into sports, Ryan? It's like, well, i got to hook the guys in and all this stuff. But uh, there was something that happened uh, this week. It had to do with uh, the NBA playoffs. So uh, if you're not familiar with basketball at all, let me kind of fill you in. The Golden State Warriors are playing the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, Golden State ended up winning game one, but it came down to, like, the last shot, and a guy by the name of uh, Clay Thompson, he, he made it. He got a three-pointer, he won, all those things. Uh, Golden State took game one, and everything went forward. Now, what happens in the NBA after a game is you go and you go do a press conference. So you got to kind of go put yourself in front of the media and a bunch of reporters will turn around and ask you a bunch of questions. So Clay got the game-winning three-point basket. He, he, he's the one who caused Golden State to take game one. And while sitting there, one of the reporters asked, like, hey, you missed a couple free throws late in the game. Uh, how does that make you feel? And I loved his response. Because he didn't get defensive. He didn't be like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm human. And I sat there and I listened to that, and I'm like, that, that, that's so profound. Because he made the game-winning shot. He made the basket. Like, again, he's one of the Splash Brothers. Like, he, he caused game one to go to Golden State. And what was the focus? The thing he did wrong. And I think sometimes we live in a world where you can do 99 things right, and then you do one thing wrong. And then what is the thing that gets hyper-focused on? You could get an A-plus on every single paper, then you do bad on one, you get like a C, and oh my gosh. You could turn every single paper in on time, you could get any document to your bosses on time, and then you do one thing wrong. And then what is focused on? Like, I, I, I'm not a fan of this. So again, I, I love Clay's response, though. He didn't get defensive, he didn't try to like own it, he didn't try to like do that false humility. You're right, I really need to go back to the, the court, I need to go practice some more. Like, he's one of the best outside perimeter shooters in the entire NBA, I'm human. I'm flawed. I, I, I'm not perfect. And the fact that he landed there kind of brought me to the, the, this thing, and I, I said this a little bit with a child dedication, like perfectionism isn't the goal. Uh, progress is, growing is, but like perfection cannot be attained. It, we're, we're never going to be perfect. We're, we're, we're going to be flawed. The, the Bible even says, again, all have fallen short of the glory of the Lord. We mess up. We screw up. Now, does it give us license to mess up or purposely mess up? No. But so often in life, whatever context, whether you be, uh, again, uh, somebody in high school or college, whether you be a parent, whether you work, whether you're like, man, I'm the best driver in the world, sometimes we mess up. Sometimes out of negligence, sometimes we're not paying attention, sometimes because other circumstances happen and it causes us to, to stumble or fail or mess up. But the reality is perfectionism isn't the goal. Now, going back to this verse that I've been using for all of Proverbs, Proverbs 21.30, no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. The thing that we've been saying is God's ways always win. God is victorious. God is perfect. There's not too many places in the world where it's like, hey, we know that God is the Alpha and the Omega. We know that God's invisible attributes are seen through all creation. We know that God is sustainer, but then we're like, but you got to be exactly that. you got to be as strong as the one who created everything. And there's not that. What we are called to do is we're called to understand that we have this thing called sin. We have this thing where we're not perfect. And how do we push through these moments where it's like, man, I did 99 things right, but I failed on this. I'm human. I'm not trying to go down this humanistic route and it's like, it's okay to be human, but how do we go through this? So this week, I had to put a lot of like thought and a lot of prayer into this sermon. 
I, I, honestly, for, for, for personal reasons, I had to put a lot of thought and a lot of prayer. So I'll say this, and I, this is martyring myself, and people will probably say no. Like, I was stumbling and fumbling through all last week. I got in the car last week uh, speaking about fathers, and I looked at Kathy. I was like, what'd you think? She's like, you were rambling. I was like, oh, yeah, I was. <laughs> like, I, I knew exactly where I was at. I had to do the exact same thing this week where I was like, I, I don't like botching two sermons in a row. I don't like leaving church where I was like, I don't feel like I preached the gospel as clear as I should have. So for me, preaching on Mother's Day is deeply personal. But then you add the fact that what's going on in the world and the political climate that's going on, and when we start talking about mothers, ooh, I'm not trying to offend somebody. I'm not trying to take a political stance. I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm here to faithfully preach the gospel. I'm here to be a pastor. That, that is what I'm here. I, I have my opinions, but I also know what the word of God says, and I'm going to stand exactly on the word of God, and that's going to be where I'm at. So teaching this and going through this, like I, I really started looking at Clay and I, his response, and I, I don't know if it was sanctified. I don't, I don't know where his heart's at with Jesus, but I was like, you're on to something, though. There's a realness. There's, there's an applicable aspect of this. And I think that's what brings us to the next character we meet on the road. So all things with this proverb series, it's, it's people you meet along the way. And we met the Lord. We met Father. And this week, we go figure. We're going to talk about meeting mothers. So the realness, though, of how you view yourself, though, is such an applicable thing. And this is going to be one of those things where, like, I, I, I want to hit application where even if you're not a mother or even if you're, like, again, like, I'm a dude here, like, how do I take this? I, I want there to be some sort of takeaway for you. In the same right, mother is kind of like that, 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 that target. And looking at mothers is kind of that focus point. But how do you look at yourself? I, I kind of put on my notes. It's like I'm not going to, like, just turn around and say, like, it's okay to be human. I think that becomes, a thing. it's okay to err. You just mess up. You just sin. It, it, nowhere in the Bible does it say it's okay to sin. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's okay to not honor God. Like, we, we can't go down that route. That, that's not the direction. But in the same right, we, we are human, though, because we fall short. We stumble. We miss. But the reality is, in the stumbling, in the falling short, and in the missing, what should it point us to? It should point us to the beautiful grace that is found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not okay just to sit and be like, man, I messed up. Like, if you didn't turn it into a paper, I know that might not seem out. But like, again, you're, you're a stronger worker than that. You know what is right. You should do it. You didn't do it. Man, I need Jesus right now. I, I, I need Jesus' grace. I need Jesus' forgiveness. I need Jesus' to give me the spirit of motivation so I can get done with my job. So, again, we're not sitting here just trying to go, you've got to turn in your paperwork on time. You've got to drive the speed limit all time. Like, uh, but grace, though, in Christ encapsulates everything. Whether it be driving, whether it be turning in your homework, or here's the big one, how you handle your kids, how you speak to your spouse. This is where, again, it, it, to say it's okay to be human, uh, God made us human. But sin is meant to push us to a place where we know Christ. We, we, we go to his word. We, we want to accomplish living faithfully for him. So uh, I've had an amazing perspective over the last six years of a mother. And I'm not going to say who, because she gets really mad whenever I turn around and start saying she does amazing things, and she's probably going to yell at me later. But I've had an amazing perspective of a mother. And I've got to watch something. And again, I, I, I'm constantly observing, I'm constantly watching, I'm, I'm constantly people watching. And for me, the thing that I've realized is mothers are always working. Uh, the, the, without a doubt, a mother from the moment feet get off the bed, it's go. It, it from turning around again, mothers have these game winning days where they turn around, they cook, they're cleaner, they're, they're, they're the counselor, they're the referee, they're a nurse, they're an entertainer, they're a snuggler, they're the scheduler, they're the admin. Like moms get up and they just start working. But the thing I've realized, like Clay, man, do moms hold it against themselves when they mess up. Mom guilt is a real thing. I, I miss that one thing. My kid's sports uniform wasn't dry for them. Okay. You turn around and again, uh, the, the science project that your kid came to you at like 9 o'clock at night and be like, it's due tomorrow. And then again, mom scrambles to get it done. Like they internalize that. Like how could I not see those things? Moms turn around again. If something is forgot. If something isn't said, if there's a moment of weakness, and again, we, we all know this, and kids in the auditorium, sometimes you kind of poke some buttons, and again, a, a parent, mother, father, you react. 
Sometimes you look back on it and you're like, oh, why did I do that? I do that all the time as a father, but I, I, I've watched, there's a different reality between my wife, again, watching my wife mother, and I, I see it, it's like, man, you're, you're holding on to that. So game winners, your mom could have a game winning day. Dude, they, they, they've scored everything, every assist, they're there, and then one thing, it's like, botched it. Can't do it. It, it gets diminished. And, and I feel bad for women. Because we live in a culture where, again, if you work, you're bad. If you go, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you're bad. If you let your kid play and get hurt, you're bad. If you're an overly protective helicopter parent, you're bad. And again, if you turn around and you give your kids junk food, bad. If you give them only healthy treats, bad. It's like, goodness gracious. You can't let them play because they'll skin their knees. But if you don't let them skin their knees, then you're bad. You turn around and you go to work, you're bad because you're not giving your, 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 your kid your full attention. But how dare you not go out in the workforce because you can you turn around and you give them the good stuff, the fruit roll-ups and all those fun things. Like, yeah, you're a fun mom, but oh, you're not, you don't get to hear about your kid's health. There's high fructose corn syrup in that. How dare you? It's like, it's a fruit snack, man. I just needed my kid to be quiet for 15 minutes. Like, that's why I did it. But there's so much of that pressure. There's so much of that guilt. And, and like, dudes, we, we have to be honest. Like, we don't internalize any of this stuff. I'll give my kid a, a, a complete sleeve of Oreos and be like, there's your breakfast, man. Talk to me later. Like, again, that's totally fine. Like, there's not a thought. If my kids are alive and they're eating, like, yeah, you've had 17 bags of chips. What's 18, man? Knock yourself out. Enjoy. I don't internalize what I feed my kid. I mess up and I, I'll feel bad, but, like, I don't walk around with it. And I think there's this, this reality, though. The men, you mess up. You screw up. Oh, the worst. That's not so. Because there's Grace. And there's mercy, and it's not found in people, it's found in the Lord. So to kind of go back to this Proverbs 21 verse, I, I love this verse again. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. God's ways always win. So whatever you think about yourself as a parent, this is the standard I have to have because this is what was set before me. Is it godly? This is the standard you've created. Is it godly? Because, again, we can turn around and we can have wisdom, we can have understanding, we can have counsel about what it means to be a parent, more specifically what it means to be a mother. But is it biblical? Does it line up with what Scripture teaches a godly mother ought to be? So we're going to jump back to Proverbs chapter 1. And we, we kind of went over this last week. But Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 reads, Hear my son. So this is Solomon talking to his son. Hear my son, your father's instruction. We talked about this last week. Fathers need to make sure that they're instructing, they're delighting, and they're correcting their kids. So father's instructions. And forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are graceful garlands for your head and pendants for your neck. So throughout Proverbs, what we're going to see is Solomon is talking to his son. He's saying, this is godly wisdom. So again, you're going to see the father's instructions. But so often throughout Proverbs, it's not just, this is the dad talk. So often Solomon is pulling in his wife. He's pulling, he's showing the mother's teaching. He's showing the mother's teach. So it's not just this thing, oh, dads go do. He's also bringing in, this is the smartest, wisest man in the world. The Holy Spirit has given Solomon the ability to be the wisest person. God has chosen to use Solomon's word to record them so we know them some like 2,000 years later. And what is he saying? Hear my son, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teaching. So a mother's teaching matters. What a mom does matter. Yes. It's, it's not the mess-ups. It's not that I missed that shot. It's not I forgot this. But it's the time that a mother gets to teach. That is what's important. So this becomes the thing. But teach what? What is a mom meant to teach? And man, this can go on forever. But looking at in context, when we read the entire kind of section of first Pro or Proverbs chapter 1, we'll read it kind of all and we'll land on what is a mom supposed to teach. So starting in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Hear, my son, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and a pendant or your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they, if they say, come with us and let us lie and wait for blood, let us ambush the innocent without reason. Let Sheol, that actually means the pit, that's actually hell, so let Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole. Like those who go down to the pit, 
We shall find all precious goods, and we shall fill our houses with plunder and throw away of the lot among us, and we will have one purse. What is going on? If people come up to you, son, and they start saying, let's go do some unrighteous stuff. Let's be, again, this bad influences come up to your kid. Let's go steal. Let's go take from the innocent. Let's go plunder. Let's go get ours. Son, if people come up to you and they're a bad influence, this is what I need you to do. And I love verse 15. Verse 15 in Proverbs chapter 1. My son. Personalize. Kid, my son. Do not walk in the way of them. Hold back your foot from their paths, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Son, there's going to be people that are going to come up to you, and they're going to be a bad influence. They're going to try to bring you in like, yeah, let's go do this for our own gain, our own sake. Let's take what we need to take. But what does he say? What does God's word say? Don't walk with them. Don't go that route. It's Proverbs 21, no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. God's ways always win. You're going to hear that a lot during the summer. We can think whatever we want about what it means to be a mother. We can think of whatever it means to be a father. But I love this truth today because God wants mothers to teach their kids how to walk. If you look at this, don't forsake your mother's teaching. We're going to start talking, don't be around bad influences. Don't be around sinners. Don't be in a spot where you're going to put yourself where you're separating yourself from a relationship with the Lord. But son, do not walk that way. Do not go that way. This is how you need to walk. And I kind of started thinking about moms. I started talking about mothers and how much they help their kids walk. And I can go on and say, I think everything a mom does is to ultimately help their mom walk. A mother cooks. What does a mother cook? A mother cooks, and again, if you have a teenager, you know exactly this, the amount of, again, Broly's six and what he's consuming right now. He'll turn around and he's eating at levels of me. But when a mom cooks, she cooks so a kid has the energy to be able to walk. A mom turns around and cleans. Why? A mom cleans because you can't just leave clutter in the way that your child is walking. You have to pick the stuff up so they're not falling. A mother is a counselor. Why? To encourage their kids to keep doing well. To keep on, don't give up. This is what you need to do. A mother is a referee. And I know some of you who have multiple kids because my wife is the greatest referee because I just run in and say, stop. My wife actually tries to like defuse the situation. I just throw gasoline on the fire. It generally makes it worse. But again, a, a referee to help ensure that the walk is fair and they're following the rules. A mother is a nurse because when a kid does fall, a mom is right there to take care of the wound, to help put a Band-Aid on them, to be able to help them back up. A mother is an entertainer. This might seem weird because, again, as a, as a Christian, you can turn around and say, you can make living the, for the Lord fun. You can have some joy. You can have some enjoyability. But for a mom to be an entertainer, again, to help them live life, and it's fun. A snuggler, to make sure that walk is warm. A scheduler, to make sure that that walk is perfect, purposeful. Mothers teach their kids how to walk. And at the core of, in my opinion, all the teaching, all that a mother's do, at the center of all things teaching, everything that a mother does is try to teach their kid to walk, to love them. A mother isn't done teaching when the kid is just waned. Well, you're done feeding. Good luck. You're four. A mother's not done when the kid turns 18 and they go off to college. Because so a mother's teaching is always there. A mother doesn't stop teaching when the kid is bigger than them. Or probably at about three months until Broly's towering over Kathy and it's just going to be like, hey, Broly, why are you seven and you're eight feet tall? But again, just because your boy or your girl is bigger, I don't care. I've, I've seen the biggest, baddest dudes turn around and when mom turns around and says, no, oh, it's over. I've seen linebackers. Mom's telling me this. My brother-in-law is a big dude, and I guarantee he would not step past Beth in any way, shape, or form. He's a big boy. But if mom says this, mother's not done teaching just because their kids are looking grown. Mother isn't done teaching just because their kid is, well, you're good for yourself. A mother doesn't stop teaching when a kid gets frustrated. Because we've all gone through it. As a dad, I'm going through it right now, but there's a moment in life where, your kid's going to look at you and say, I disagree with you. 
That's not what I want to do. This is that thing that God gives all of us. God gives us this thing called free will, and it's really hard when it backfires on us because, like, we love free will for ourselves, but how dare our kids have free will? Because at some point your kid is going to go do what your kid wants to go do. At some point your kid might stray, but in the same right, at some point your kid also might make the good choice. Your kid might make the repentant choice. Your kid might make the choice that pushes them to Jesus, but a mother doesn't stop teaching even when there's frustration. I might need to take five. I might need to pull myself back, and I might need you to learn the lesson. You might need to keep putting your finger in the light socket until you figure out that you shouldn't do that. In the same right, a mother doesn't stop teaching when there's frustration. Mothers teach how to walk. And threaded through Proverbs is this understanding, this idea of wisdom in teaching and instruction. Solomon's turning around. He's talking to his son. He's a grown man. This is the soon-to-be king of Israel. But he doesn't just leave moms on the outside. Son, just listen to me. Son, I got instruction. Son, I, I know what it's going to do. But guess what? Your mother, yeah, her words are there too. Throughout Proverbs, there is so much that can be talked about, about what this walk needs to be to be applied. But what does it mean to teach them to walk? I think we can all get to that point. Yeah, mothers teach a kid to walk. But what is that? How am I supposed to do that? While navigating through Scripture, I'm like, okay, I see this in Proverbs chapter 1. Do not forsake on your mother's teaching. Make sure you have that. Bind it around like a garland. Like it's, it's meant to be a prized possession. It's a pendant. It's something that people can look at and be like, that's beautiful. You're holding on to it. But what is that walk supposed to be? And I, I, I sat there and I was going through different Proverbs and I was reading through different things. But weirdly enough, I, I landed on Proverbs 31. Now, if you're a woman in here, and I hope, again, dudes, you have pushed into reading this as well. I read through Proverbs chapter 31, and like I was convicted. I sat and looked at it like, that's a high bar. That's, that's, that's some difficult things to live through. There's a lot of, like, she will do this, and she will do this. And I'm like, oh, goodness. Like, I was like, glad it's not me. Whew. But I was like, wow, this is heavy. So while looking at, okay, mothers teach their kids to walk. And I wound in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31 even starts with the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that, is mother, that his mother taught him. Just so you know, all of Proverbs 31 is the wisdom that a mother gave a king. Now, some people say this is, uh, is actually Solomon is actually the king. Uh, there's no evidence to necessarily land on that, but in the same way, some people think that. And if you know anything about Solomon's mother, Solomon's mother would have been Bathsheba, so have fun studying that one because that's a very interesting little thing about seeing the redemption of what God can do in a person's life. But I can't land there, so have fun with that. But all of 31, all of Proverbs chapter 31 is the wisdom from a mother teaching her son. Everything you see about chapter 31 in Proverbs, everything where it talks about being a woman, everything where it talks about being a godly character, it's coming from a mother to her son, and God uses that wisdom, and he sanctified that wisdom, and he held on to that wisdom, and he wrote it down in his, his word. So we are preaching Proverbs 31 later this month. So I don't want to necessarily like ruin everything there. But I felt oddly convicted because I was looking at the, all the things. Again, you work, you're bad. You stay home, you're bad. You let your kid play and they get hurt and that's bad. You're overly protective. You give kids junk food. You don't give children. Bad, 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 bad. And if you read through proper, Proverbs chapter 31, you almost can get to that. How in the world can I live to this standard? This is a godly woman. Proverbs 31, good luck. There's so much there. But what is it saying? Son, lead well. It goes into the oracle. Again, don't give power to women. Don't be a drunkard. Make sure you're leading well. But the mother then goes into this crazy just list of all things that a mother is meant to be. Partner, Proverbs 31, verse 10. And an excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. So in Proverbs 1, it starts out with, son, make sure you're wise. Hey, make sure you're finding a godly woman. This is a list of a godly woman. And it's you need to love, you need to work, you need to show grace, you need to be elegant, you need to be tender, you need to be excellent. You're, you're out in the community helping people while you're in your home helping people. You're selling stuff while turning around and helping your kid with their science project. And it's like, huh? And you get to a point where it's easier sometimes to throw in the towel and be like, I just need the Lord's grace. I can't live to that. But I look at this again, this is, this is meant to be realistic. This is not meant to be something that's unrealistic. This is meant to be something where people can read. And if you press into Jesus, wow, I can be that. 
So for us, again, when we look at Proverbs 31, is it meant to be unrealistic? It, realistic? Because with all of chapter 31, the last verse in Proverbs 31 lands on exactly what a mom is meant to be. Exactly what a godly wife is meant to be. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 reads, Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. And I love this part. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her work be pra praise her in the gates. So as much as instead of going to Proverbs 31 and getting bogged down by everything, because there's a lot there. If you're like, I got to work, I got to be a stay-at-home mom and go work 40 hours and I got to make stuff and I got to do this and I got to be awesome in the community and my husband loves me. Like, that can be a lot. Welcome to that, you did 100 things right and then what happens if something falls? You're human. You need grace. You need love. But if, you, if you're reading Proverbs 31 and you're like, I need to do. This is what I need to be. But you miss that aspect of what a woman is meant to be. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. It means having that relationship. Understanding that when you fear the Lord, it starts understanding. And the thing that we need to understand about our Lord is he's graceful. And he's loving. And he's compassionate. And he's kind. And he doesn't expect you to be perfect. So for us, when we look at a mother, a mother reflects godly character. A mother reflects, it starts with, we fear the Lord as moms. I fear the Lord. And that is the thing that brings wisdom. And when we have wisdom about God, what does that bring? It brings us the ability to walk with the Lord. Because if we don't fear the Lord and we don't have wisdom, we don't know how to walk with the Lord, we're never going to be able to reflect our ability to walk with the Lord. A mother shows her walk with the Lord so her kids can be taught how to walk with the Lord. You're a reflection. You're a mirror. Now there's this crazy thing called free will. And just because you show it doesn't mean your kids are going to walk directly behind you. It's not follow the leader perfectly. But what a mother does understand is she walks with the Lord nonetheless. She relies on the she trusts the Lord. So whether her kids are perfectly following her example and showing Jesus or whether or not, she still goes to the Jesus, or she still goes to the Lord. She still fears the Lord because she understands that he is in control. But a mother is meant to show how to walk with the Lord. And then her kids see that they are walking with the Lord. Because the one thing I've noticed more than anything, most kids know if their mom is following Jesus, whether they're following it or not, they can still go, yeah, my mom is. But this becomes the beautiful thing. When you talk to your kids about walking for the Lord, do you talk to them about the perfectionism? I have to be perfect. You have to be able to do all this. You have to be Proverbs 31, daughter. No. Or do you talk to your kids because, again, your walk is fearing the Lord, brings about understanding, or do you talk about the grace, the mercy, and the compassion that we have by knowing our Lord? That becomes the thing. That's what we reflect. We're not reflecting perfectionism because God doesn't turn around and say, be per perfect and then you get a relationship with me. But fear of the Lord brings about grace, brings about mercy, brings about repentance. So for us, again, a mother shows her walk with the Lord so her kids can be taught how to walk with the Lord. And walking with the Lord entails one wise truth, that we fall short, that we mess up. That sometimes we don't make the basket. Sometimes that game-winning shot isn't something we make. We sometimes miss some free throws. It's not always going to be the best thing in the world. And again, it's not admitting I'm human and just staying there, but it's admitting I'm human, I'm flawed, I fall short of the glory of the God, and now I'm pushing into his grace. Because my walk with the Lord starts with fear and understanding, and it pushes me to know him. Earthly parenting without weakness or fault or admitting failure isn't showing a true walk with the Lord. One of the strongest things I've learned in parenting is I look at my sons now because, man, do I mess up a lot. But I'll pull my sons aside and be like, I'm sorry. Dad was rude. Dad was mean. Dad was crass. Dad was being short towards you. Dad made you feel bad. And I watch my kids like, but I want my sons to know that I am not the perfect one. He is the perfect one. 
The one who died on a cross was the perfect one. But as parents, especially, again, mothers, again, I can't be weak. I can't show failure. I have to be the mom who can get the craft done at 9 o'clock at night, and i got to run out to Mitchell's and make a solar system diorama about with fruit, and you do all those crazy things. That's not what it's at. For me, parenting, when you show the fear of the Lord, you show that you know you're weak. You show that you're in need of him. And we did this kind of last summer, but I've been loving this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 reads, and, but he said to me, this is Paul talking, he's praying to God, but he said to me, so this is what God says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insult, hardship, persecution, and calamities. For when I am weak, I am strong. For a mom to turn around and admit weakness is one of the biggest things ever. Because a mom can't be weak. A mom's propping up the husband most of the time. Mom can't turn around and say, I'm struggling to her kids because mom still has to figure out how to get that laundry done. Mom's got to figure out how to turn around and start doing the dishes. Mom's got to be able to hold everything that she's going on in her life. She has to feed everybody. She has to cook dinner. But no wisdom, no counsel prevails against the Lord. The Lord tells us that what we should do is admit weakness. We should admit failure. We should admit we need help. Because when we are weak, we are strong. For us moms, parents, really, show your kids how to walk by showing them that you need him. Show your kids that you serve and you're emptying yourself for them and others. You're emptying yourself out in service and love and washing feet. But in the same right, you're filled back up by him. And sometimes turn around and be like, I ain't doing well. This is getting a little stressful right now. You're driving me crazy, but I love you. Pick up your own socks. Sometimes saying those things, again, you're admitting like I, you don't have to be perfect. Because if you're trying to be perfect, how are you reflecting Jesus? We reflect Jesus by saying, like, we need Jesus. We need him to show up. We need him to fill in those cracks. We need him to fill in those weaknesses. Because if you ever walk around and say, I don't need the Lord, really? I need him every single day. I have four kids. I don't know what I'm doing. I need him as a father. And I know for a fact my wife is the one who is making sure that she's filling in all the cracks that I'm missing. She's making sure laundry is done. I can let dishes mount up in the sink and be like, oh, that's a problem. Oh, we don't have forks. Okay. These are those things that moms do. Laundry, that's not a thought that a dude has. But for moms, moms, walk in dependence of the Lord. I need you. I messed up and I need his grace, but I need to show you that I'm asking for forgiveness for you because I did mess up. I need the Lord to be my energy. I need the Lord to be my strength. I need to be him because he's the thing that I'm clinging to. Showing your kids how to walk in that exact same dependence and that exact same need of Jesus is how a mother teaches a kid how to walk. Not perfectionism. Not you got to have it all right. Not this moralistic therapeutic gospel that Jesus will love you when you're doing well. We're not creating a Chuck E. Cheese mentality inside of the church. But teaching kids and you showing your kids, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. Because no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. God never set the standard for moms that was meant to be seen on Instagram. You're not supposed to go to Instagram or TikTok and be like, oh my gosh, that woman wakes up at four in the morning, slaughters the pig, makes her own sausage, makes biscuits and gravy, and like... That's what I got to be. Okay, now I feel bad. That's not the standard God has set for us to go to social media. God never made, again, online bloggers to be the top counselors of what it means to be a mother. God didn't give one person's rational aspects of parenting as the blueprint of motherhood. Well, she said it and she's got a blog. She said it and she's, on, she's really loud, so she must be right. So what God gave to set a standard of parenting. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. God's ways win. And the standard that God has set for a godly mother is found in his word. And the 
way that we unlock that is, again, we start going to his word, and it points us back to him. So mothers, when we're here, if you're a mother, and you're sitting here, and you're like, ooh, that hit. I want to encourage you to keep going, because it's hard to be a mom. It's tough to try to figure out what's going on and to be able to keep, again, juggling and spinning plates and to keep all those, like, things going. It's difficult. But keep going. But don't keep going on your own strength. If you've been like, man, I'm just going to, like, get this motherhood thing and just gun it till they're, like, 34, then I'll be good. Rely on the Lord. Because what does Proverbs 131 say? Again, the woman that's to be praised, a woman that's, again, to be honored. Again, what does she have? She has a walk with the Lord. If you're trying to do it on your own strength, find the Lord. Walk with him. Show your kids that walk. And for the rest of us, even some mothers in this case, if you have a mother that has shown you Jesus, if you have a mother that has shown you that walk, if you have a mother that showed you that, you know what, she needs the Lord, that she's messed up, that she has weakness, but again, she finds her strength found in one thing and one thing only in the cross of Jesus Christ. If you have a mom here who's cared for you and loved you and shown you that walk of the Lord, go give her a hug. Go love her. Maybe there's something you're holding on to, but my, my, my mom said I can't do this. Maybe you need to forgive her. Realize that she's trying to help you. But for us today, the thing that I, I want to point us to as a church, because we're not here celebrating mothers. That's not the top level of praise today. We're here to celebrate Jesus Christ. And the thing that allows us to be able to celebrate Jesus is his grace and his work on the cross. So moms, keep showing Jesus. Keep showing your kids how to walk. Even in the hard times, even in the times you want to give up, even the times you're grinding, keep showing. If you're like, but I don't have strength, I'm tired, I need a nap. Take a nap. One, husbands, give your wife a nap tonight. But two, rely on his strength. Rely on his energy. Rely on his grace. In the same way, I want us all to know we don't celebrate moms for the sake. We're celebrating moms because Jesus Christ, God in his sovereign plan, decided to bless you with your mother. There's no such thing as a mistake in the cosmos. The reality is God gave you your mom for a very specific reason. Love her, cherish her, and thank her for her showing you Jesus because, man, I don't know where some of us would be without moms. Because I don't know where my family would be right now. I don't know where my household would be if I didn't have Kathy. But let's make sure that we're celebrating Jesus for what he's done and blessed you with who you have as a mother.